Hello my darlings, it's Zue here and today we're having another fan fiction written by a different author. Uh, Cat Peasant is back with her Alistair story. Say hello to Cat Peasant everybody. Now I hope you enjoy it and please remember I have a merch store and a Patreon. Both links are down in the description and remember to watch the video until the end, like or dislike and comment your favorite part down below. Now let's get right into it. Your blanket was wrapped around your body like a cocoon. Despite the relaxing sound of the rain pouring outside your window, you forced yourself to stay awake. You just wanted the day to end already, so Alistair could get his nighttime fun over with, and you could get some much needed rest. As long as you didn't have any more nightmares. There was a loud but somewhat gentle knock at your bedroom door. Come in, you said as you turned to face the door. Hello again, my dear. I'm glad you didn't fall asleep on me. <laughs> Alistair said as he opened the door and stepped into the room. Not like you'd let me. You mumbled. Alistair set a bowl of tomato soup in front of you. He handed you a spoon and you dipped it into the soup and slurped the liquid down your throat. You groaned when your heart fluttered in your chest. Remembering one of the many stupid reasons you loved this asshole. He was a damn good cook. You quietly ate the soup. Alistair took a seat beside you as you finished your meal. You mentally screeched in frustration. You put the bowl on your bedside table before speaking. How often does it rain in hell? Not often, Alistair replied, his voice lacing with boredom. Most likely about twice a year. Wow. We are in hell, my dear. It's not known for being cold and rainy. That sucks. It's nice. The rain, I mean. You laughed bitterly. The one thing that kept you from breaking down into tears was the stupid rain. You yawned quietly. Yeah, still sleepy, aren't we? How precious. You didn't say anything. You just wanted him to leave. You were tired. So damn tired. <laughs> You'll be able to sleep soon, my dear. But for now... He teleported in front of your face, crouching down. I can do things like this. He pooped you on a noise with a playful, smug grin. You glowered at him, making him smile even more. Why are you doing this now? Don't you usually do this shit at night? I'm bored. Besides, I like playing with you, so why not start early? Oh, great. With a snap of Alistair's fingers, your beloved blanket was gone. Come on, give that back! You protested. As adorable as you look, all curled up like that, I am afraid it will only make you... sleepier. Alistair hummed contently as he stroked your cheek with the back of his hand. You desperately tried to focus on the rain. You had to focus on it. You shut your eyes tightly. His smile wavered slightly. This simply wouldn't do. That's when he had a devilish idea. He chuckled tightly before you could ask him what was so funny. You felt a pair of soft, gentle lips kiss your forehead. Your eyes immediately shut open, shocked expression on your face. What? You whispered. Your face was bright red. <laughs> 
Keep those beautiful eyes on me, darling. And maybe I'll do it again. Your mind was racing. Did that actually just happen? Did he really kiss you? You thought he was an asexual. Then again, forward kisses weren't always romantic, but still. Alistair started humming again, satisfied with his work. You really were entertaining. Your eyes were focused on him, just as he wanted it. You squeaked when his lips met your forehead again. He slipped his hand away and kissed both your cheeks, making him more flustered. Suddenly, Angel slammed the door open with a fury expression on his face. I'll get the fuck out! Angel growled. Alistair stood up and approached him calmly. He chortled. The radio demon clicked his tongue. And who are you making orders, Angel Cakes? The spider flinched before glaring venomously. Don't call me that, you... Alistair wrapped his hand around Angel's neck and raised him off the ground. Why shouldn't I? That's what that filthy pin Valentino calls you. A rather fitting name, actually, considering that you will let anyone have their way with you for money. Like someone eating a delicious cake and then forgetting about it an hour later. Maybe even going out to get a better tasting cake. He snickered, amused by the way his prey struggled, and how his eyes portrayed both anger and pain. He wondered if Angel tasted like cotton candy. Cutting him in nice little bits, while he screamed out for his life only to die due to blood loss before eating his meal. Perhaps he could dine on fat nuggets as his filthy slut of an owner helplessly watched. He snapped out of his fantasy when you gripped his wrist. He snarled and turned his attention to you. The static ran in your ears. And intelligible whispers echoed around you. And what do you think you're doing? He hissed in his sickly sweet voice. Your voice wavered. Uh, uh, leave. And let go of Angel. Then I let go. He stared at you for ten seconds before dropping Angel to the ground. You released your grip on him. He scowled at the red marks you left on his skin. He would have to confront you later, but for now, he would take his leave. Goodbye, my dear! Alistair called as he left the room. You went over to Angel Dust. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Say I'm fine! The two of you fell silent. You looked at Angel apologetically. He didn't deserve to be treated like this. Should you have taken his place? Wait. Why was Angel here to begin with? Why are you here? Come on. It should be obvious. That freak was fucking with you. How could you have known that? Well, after you and Al came home, Oscar told me about the weird shit he said. He did? Why? He doesn't like Alistair any more than Vaggy or I do. And I'm telling you not to sleep is strange and then seeing him with you like that didn't help either. You looked away in embarrassment. You really wished he hadn't seen that. Yeah, things have been weird lately. How long? What? How long has this been going on? Not long. Three days. Three nights. Three nights? Wait, he does this shit at night? Fucking creep. It's fine, I can handle him. He scoffed. Yeah, I'm sure. I can help. No, I... I mean, no, thank you. But no! I don't want your help. I... I can do this on my own. Bullshit. You can help even if you wanted to. He could kill you, just... A split second. I could tell Charlie. No. I want to bother her. He's using you. 
I don't care. I... I love him. Well, you shouldn't. I know that, but... If you tell Charlie, who knows what he will do? Please, just... Just let me handle this. Considering how much he's got you wrapped around his finger, I doubt that. He does not. He literally was touching you. And you didn't do anything about it. I... Uh... You sighed. He was right. But you had to deal with him yourself. Okay, you're right. But I need to do this myself. I appreciate your concern, but I, I, I can't have him hurting you. I, I don't know how, but I have to climb out of this rebel hole on my own. I have to prove to him that I'm more than what he thinks I am. He let out a heavy sigh. Well, if that's what you really want, I won't get in your way, but I will keep tabs on him after this display. It's the least I can do. You gave him a small smile. Thank you, Angel. Eh, no sweat. Don't think we're all buddy-buddy, though. You hear? You chuckled. <laughs> all right. So... I didn't get much sleep last night, so I'm gonna take a nap. Uh, sounds like a good idea. Sleep well, schnookums. He smirked as he left the room, closing your door behind him. You were about to return to your bed when you remembered that Alistair stole your blanket. You refused to ask him to give it back. Maybe you could find another one. You were about to step out into the hallway when hands grabbed you by the shoulder. Bonjour, puppy. Alistair perked into your left ear from behind. A pleasant shiver ran up your spine. You had always thought the language was beautiful, but hearing Alistair use it was strangely satisfying. <laughs> Why are you speaking French? You questioned. Do you like it, mon chéri? Why are you here anyway? Don't you have anything else to do? You know, something that doesn't involve me? <laughs> I apologize for returning so soon. But then again, you did do something quite rude. Hasn't your mother ever told you to keep your hands to yourself? I'd like to ask you the same thing. <laughs> well... <laughs> I didn't hurt your wrist, did I? You yelled when he twirled you around to face him. You are grateful when he released you and took a few steps back. No, but you tried to kill Angel. <laughs> that disgusting spider doesn't deserve any sympathy from you. The only thing he is good for is... Ugh, his repulsive job. That's not true. He fell silent and looked into your face. You pouted like a frustrated child. He smirked. You were too adorable to be in hell. He had been listening in on your conversation with Angel Dust. Did you honestly think you could get out of this? Well, he was sure you would be too weak to actually do anything... He still wanted to be certain you wouldn't run free. He clasped his hands behind his back as he spoke again. Angel looked pretty delectable. I don't normally like sweet things, but I do love meat. No. But perhaps we could make an arrangement of some sort. I'm not making a deal with you. You so easily have wrapped my hand around his neck. Do you really want to be responsible for the death of the Happy Hotel's first resident? Your heart pounded as he approached you. But He placed his hand on your cheek. 
If we make a deal, I can let the spider live. All you have to do is give me something in return. You glare daggers at him. What? <laughs>